Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I have been doing daily Doctor Who reviews on my Tumblr. I've been starting from season one. I'm now halfway through season two. I'm gonna leave that in the description, but I find it's quite inaccessible to have all my reviews on Tumblr because some people don't have Tumblr and therefore can't read my giant ramblings about Doctor Who episodes. So today I thought, hey, how about after I finish a season, I just summarize it and then give you a big tear list video on YouTube. That sounds cool. I think that's cool. I'm gonna do it. You can't stop me. <laughs> so, Rose, the first episode of Modern Doctor Who, introducing an entire new generation to the character. Did it do a good job? I think it did. I think it really, really did. You, you get an idea of the sort of scale of how old, how wise the Doctor is in this episode. Uh, he really is able to... Sort of, Christopher Eggleston was a fantastic performance and he can he instantly sells himself as the role, which a lot of actors struggle to do in their first episode. Um, I love the fact that this is from Rose's perspective. It's almost like she's an audience surrogate for that first episode and that helps so much of introducing this crazy character to us who we hadn't seen for 20 years, barring like a team of movie. So, yeah, I think it does a really, really good job. I think... There are something holding it back. There's a reason it is an Esther episode. I think the Autons can get a bit goofy at times. The the fake Mickey pizza kind of scenario is the one that instantly jumps up in my mind. Um, but overall, you know, decent villain. A very, very tight strip, script. It does a very good job of that. Yeah, love it. So, end of the world. Episode 2. We've had, this, we had a little bit of goofiness in uh, Rose, episode 1. And end of the world takes that 10-20% that bit of goofiness, amps it up to about 80%. That's a C tier for me. Um, I do appreciate how goofy it is. It's always fun to go back and watch the end of the world. It's ever a dull watch, which I can always appreciate. But um, there's a reason we haven't seen the box of Balhoon return in a Doctor Who episode. Because it's just a bit Star Wars. And it gets a bit crazy with it. There is a finale where the Doctor, instead of being doing some sort of smart thing and saving the world, he decides to try and do parkour for a bunch of fans. That's what he has to do. It's just crazy. But th there are some good character moments. Um, I do think it's a very good sort of metaphor for Rose being thrown out to some alien world. And it's like the most alien you could make a world really, uh, in an episode two of a sci-fi show you're trying to bring back and get a contemporary audience to listen to. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's okay. It's just, I think the goofiness holds it back a little bit too much, um, which is unfortunate, because there are some good themes. I mean, the whole Cassandra purity thing, like, that's, that's crazy, you know. Um, but, moving on, moving on. The Unquiet Dead, episode three. How do I feel about this one? Well, I just mentioned, you know, at least the end of the world, you know, whilst it was not the greatest episode, because I think it fell flat in a few areas, you know, it was at least goofy, it was at least fun. The Inquiet Dead is not goofy, it's not fun. I don't like the setting. I think the characters don't really change that much from it. Uh, I, it's a detail for me. I, I, I really just don't like this episode. It's just not an enjoyable watch for me. Uh, I do find it very, very dull. I, It's just hard for me to mention what happens in the episode because I've watched it like three times now and I still can't really recall what happens. The only thing I remember is the, the maid talking about the big bad wolf and sort of getting a vision into the future. You've got the Gelf trying to, you know, escaping and then it's like, hey, hey, we got you, Doctor. And the Doctor was like, no. And uh, it, there's not much in this episode for me, which is a shame, because I know a lot of people are able to find a lot from it. It's just not my episode. Uh, it does not fit me and my brain. I just, I watch it, and I turn off, and I, I can't focus. So, yeah, detail episode for me. <laughs> but, moving on. Aliens of London and World War Three. Where do I rank these? I mean, fighting aliens, kind of goofy. In Downing Street, kind of goofy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a beta episode. It's a beta episode. It's it's solid Doctor Who. There, there are some very big glaring weaknesses. I think the resolution of, oh, yeah, let's just hack into the nuclear missile codes of the UK via my home computer. 
I don't think it's very viable. I'm going to be real. Um, but they needed to sort of wrap it all up. I do think it's a very interesting story. I like the idea of the, a fake alien crash for the real aliens to like, do a political sabotage. I think that's fucking awesome. I think Harriet Jones is cool. Great character. I think um, the Doctor and Rose do get some very nice development in this because of the whole, oopsie, arrived a year late. Uh-oh. Um, but yeah, I like it. I like it. I think... It's solid Doctor Who, and solid Doctor Who goes in beta. That's just how it works here. But, you know, enough about solid episodes that are pretty decent. We're a Dalek. I don't... It's S tier. It's S tier Doctor Who. You know, it sets up so many story arcs up to, like, the 50th anniversary. Any episode you find up to that point where the Daleks have been threatening, it has spawned from Dalek. Any Time War episode. That started in Dalek, and Christopher Eggleston's performance in this episode... It's phenomenal. He just, he really just brings this sort of brooding energy to the character where you can see that this, the Doctor suffered so much and his, the the contrast from how he's dealt with aliens in The Unquiet Dead when he let the Gelf come out. In the end of the world, he's kind of goofy about it. He hasn't really been too ruthless with his enemies, he's always giving them a second chance. With a Dalek. <laughs> there are no second chances. Yeah, nine is going in. And it's a lovely contrast because you take Rose, who has experienced the Doctor give this sort of mercy, and Rose is like, well, no, maybe we don't exterminate the creature, you know? Maybe. I don't know. And it's a lovely, lovely bit of writing, and it makes the entire episode just so engaging. And yeah, this is what one Dalek can do, and it means that for like four seasons now, you see the Dalek come up and you're like, holy shit, they can fuck things up. And this is what this episode does. Um, Dalek's an amazing episode, I think. If 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 you're not going to go for Rose to introduce someone to Doctor Who, you show them Dalek. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, you know, Dalek came and was awesome. And then they brought Adam Mitchell along and that was a long game. And the long game was also kind of goofy. It had some interesting things in it, I'll have to admit. There were some very interesting things in the long game that I kind of liked. Um, I think the setting is cool. I think it has a lot to say about fake news, which has become even more relevant in this sort of century. But... Yeah, it's got issues. It has got issues. The long game has has issues. Um, the villain doesn't really get much to sort of, any sort of development, like, at all. Uh, Adam just kind of fucks off and becomes an immensely unlikable character, which is kind of the point. Um, one of the draft names for the long game was the companion who couldn't, which I think is so fucking cool. Because, yes, Adam Richard was definitely the companion who couldn't. Um, it's just, unfortunately, there's not much to like in this episode. I don't feel like the Doctor and Rose change at all thanks to this episode. It, it It's not a particularly interesting plot. The side characters aren't fun. It, it just, it lacks a lot of that fun that you want from Doctor Who. But at the same time, I'm willing to sacrifice fun for good character moments. But it's not even good character moments. So it just kind of makes it a bit of a shit episode. Um, however, this is where things like Dalek, The Long Game, this is where things start getting set up for the finale. And I'll... Bring that up when I get to talk about it. Father's Day, though. Oh my god, I pressed the back button. Oh dear. We're okay. Everything's saved. We're okay. <laughs> Father's Day. <laughs> Whew. And hey, talking about rectifying mistakes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, um, Father's Day is amazing. It's a really, really good watch. It's a super interesting saying, you know, having a sort of broken piece of time because you've just caused a paradox. And these, like, tie Reavers come out. It's, it's awesome. There's lovely character moments. Um, you know, Rose gets to meet her family. She gets to realise that all these stories she's been told about Pete Tyler, about her dad, aren't necessarily true. And it's it's really fucking cool. Seeing the Doctor lose his shit at Rose as well. Like, oh, it's good. It's really, you know, yeah, it's S tier. It's S tier. It's a really good episode. It really is. Like, I love it. It's just... I, I, it's, a, it's an episode that I find hard to remember. 
which is annoying because like I passed over it when I was doing uh, like, originally the whole inspiration for doing all these reviews. I decided to tear this every episode just off my memory, and I forgot Father's Day existed just completely, which is crazy because it's such an awesome episode. And I don't know how I forgot it. But, yeah, there are so many cool moments in this episode, and it it just gives so much life to the sort of Tyler family that we end up, like, growing with the next two seasons. And it gives a lot of good content. It's just great. It's a great little bit of uh, Who. And, yeah. Honestly, makes... What are the only episodes that make Rose kind of likable, in my opinion? I, I kind of struggle with Rose a lot, especially in the second season. But we'll talk about that next... Um, next video. I can speak. I'm a YouTuber. Okay. But, after Father's Day... We have The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. This is Stephen Moffat's first Doctor Who episode that he's wrote. Um, obviously went on to become a showrunner. Had years and years with the show. This where it started. I, I love this episode as well. I get to, I, I, I'm going to gush about it. I'm probably going to put it just behind Father's Day. This is slightly different to the tailors they had on Tumblr. But I've grown so appreciative of Father's Day that I just have to. Empty Child Doctor Dances is a fantastic story, though. It takes a lot of really strong horror elements, a lot of body horror in there. As a kid, it terrified me. But it's got such a lovely little message in it. This, this, you know, you get to see the Doctor finally have some hope. Finally be able to say that everybody lives. It's fucking awesome. Um, and it also introduces Captain Jack, who, as I spoke about in my Tumblr review, is a c complicated character now with... Some of the things that have come out about John Barrowman's behaviour on set. He, unfortunately, it doesn't change the fact that he was my favourite character. And he still kind of is. Like, I, I just love him. It's just so much fun to have around the TARDIS team. Um, and his introduction in this episode is great. And honestly, I find it very hard to fault Empty Shadow documents. There, there isn't really much to say that's bad about it. It just has a... Really unique style and vision, which you'll see across all of Moffat's uh, episodes, at least throughout um, seasons one through four, where he's a very different take to the Doctor, I think, than a lot a lot of other writers do, and I really really appreciate it. Um, but, anyways, yeah, great episode. Watch it. Well, if you've not watched it, what, the, what? Why are you even watching this video? What? Okay. Anyways. Boomtown. Boomtown. Boomtown's a controversial one. This is a very controversial one because I have heard some people really dog on Boomtown and some people love it. Um, I... You know what? I do like it. I do like it. I like it a bit more than Rose. It's, it's Slice of Life Doctor Who. And if you don't like it, if you want high stakes and high action, then you're, you're in the wrong place. Boomtown's not for you and I can understand why that would be like a CD tier episode if that's what you look for in Doctor Who. But I really like this part of this team. I love just seeing them goof about as some fantastic character moments again in these episodes. Um, the Doctor sort of dealing with, you know, dining with someone he's about to send to execute. That's fucking awesome. Uh, I think Mickey and Mickey gets some fantastic development in Boomtown. Who, it's a character who we don't really talk about often because he's sort of like a side character in a lot of episodes. Kind of the point. But he, he finally learns to stand on his own two feet for a moment. In Boomtown, and it's where he sort of gets to sort of have a bit of a redemption arc, um, which I do appreciate. Um, I would say Captain Jack does get shoved to the side in this episode, but I mean, I don't, I'm not really too fussed, you know, it's just, it's a little biggie. And yeah, I, I do think it is very low stakes, which, you know, for a lot of people might be a bit of a, oh, I don't like it kind of thing, which is fair, very valid. But for me, A tier episode. And finally, Bad Wolf. Party of the Ways, the finale uh, of this season. Now, Doctor Who finales are very sort of contentious. Uh, I know people have big opinions about a lot of them. For me, I think, after ruminating on it, after my review, Bad Wolf's A tier, I think it can be a little bit goofy, um, but I'm not at the end of the world where the goofiness, whilst it serves a purpose, is sort of just out there. Like, I find it more charming in Bad Wolf. I find the, the killer game shows that were game shows from like 2005 that are already dead in that time, like, crazy. But also kind of like, there's a lot of nostalgia in it, but it's very fun. Um, seeing the sort of 
first time they did the whole, oh, look, Rose has died. Whoa, the Doctor's going to get mad. But it was actually done well in this episode. And there are some episodes in season two where I get really grumbly about it. But in this episode, it is done quite well. Um, seeing the Ninth Doctor in sort of revenge state is, is always a treat. But, you know. It's 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 a fun one. It's a fun one. Now, part of the ways I don't like the I I'll, I'll be candid. I do not like the ending. The oh Rose, I think you need a doctor. What? 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 Why didn't you end the kiss? Why didn't you end the kiss? Who decided that? Why? Huh? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't love you. I do not like it. But but the Daleks are cool. The Daleks are cool. And once again, you know, you can see just what these, like, the invasion of Satellite 5, the inevitability that the Daleks will go on that ship, will murder everybody, will eventually get to the Doctor. The fact that the Doctor's waiting to just blow up all humanity because, hey, we need to kill the Daleks. It, it's lovely. And it ties in, there are so, like, I could point to all the inhabitants in a nest here. And they all build to Pying of the Waves. It is insane. Um... As examples, um, Rose uses the fact that she went and saw Pete Tyler to convince Jackie to get the truck. Uh, that's from Father's Day. Uh, in Dalek, well, do I need to explain Dalek? I don't think I need to explain Dalek. Um, oh, God. I mean, catching Jack from Empty Shower Dr. Dances, there's something else there, but I've forgotten it. Um, obviously, all the bad wolf thing. It, like, it, it just, it takes so much. Like, even the long game, like the setting. Like, it takes so much from so many episodes of the first series, and... It's what I really sort of admire about Series 1, is that it builds a world and then uses it in future episodes. Like, it was all building up to Parting of the Ways, and I do appreciate that. That's why it has to go in A tier, even though, why? Why didn't it have to end at a kiss? Who decided that? I don't like the Doctor and Rose as a romantic thing. Yes, that means Series 2 becomes a whole thing. I don't know why it had to bloody end in a kiss, but... Bar that, great episode. Bar that, great episode. And yeah, this is basically it. Now, I wasn't expecting the Christmas Invasion to be on here. Good news, I've reviewed it as well, so I can talk about it. But I'm just going to put it in B tier. It's a solid episode. Introduces the Tenth Doctor, again uses Rose as the audience surrogate. But this time, instead of it sort of being like, Ten, instantly, bang, out the door is the Doctor. It's more the, like... It's sort of Rose dealing with the regeneration and the Doctor kids that come in at the end and have a sword fight, which is kind of weird. I don't know why the Doctor... Like, the Doctor doesn't usually go for violence, or at least... It feels very uncharacteristic for the Doctor to do a sword fight. <laughs> for me, at least. Um, but it is solid. It does its job. And I love the fact it, like, uses, the, again, the pre-built world from Series 1 to introduce the new element. And that's what Series 1 does really well. It uses the world it starts to build to make more episodes and it does a really really good job of it and it you're watching the season one and you already feel familiar with all the characters and what they they aspire to be and what the world is like and all the goofy shit in Doctor Who yeah it does a great job of it so this is my tier list this is my summary of series one I hope you enjoyed it I hope my rambling wasn't too rambly for you but if you liked it leave a like comment subscribe show it up 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 um, I'll be here in a week and a half to talk about Series 2. I'm able to do some of my opinions in here. And if you want to get a head start and read my ramblings, just check my Tumblr in the description. Thanks a lot. And can Daisy find the stop recording button? No, she can't. And will she edit? No, she won't.